Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new application I've written, Pi APRS. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we get to today's content, I'd like to recognize these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. I've got to give a big shout out to two different gentlemen here that are responsible for inspiration and helping me get this application up and running. The first is Thomas. Thomas is the patron that originally asked for an application such as this. And really, he just asked if I knew of one that we could run on the Pi. I uh, took a look around, didn't see anything, and it was kind of the inspiration to build this. And the second person is Kilo 4, Kilo Delta Romeo, Scott. And Scott was a huge help uh, in understanding uh, the way Packet is constructed and uh, helping me understand what is important for satellite operators. Scott's a huge satellite operator, and this project would not have been possible without his help. This new application is super simple to install and get configured. And we'll go ahead and start by opening up the terminal window. Now let's head over to GitHub so we can get the download link. Okay, and guys, I'll leave a link to this uh, down in the description below, but it's github.com forward slash km4ack. Once you're over here, let's go ahead and click on Pi APRS. And then right here for the clone or download, let's click that and let's highlight all of this link here and copy it and head back over to the Pi. Back on the Pi, we're going to use get space clone and then paste in the link that we just copied from GitHub. Go ahead and press return. Now, one thing, uh, this application uses a interface called YAD. If you're running my build a Pi script, you already have YAD installed and working. If you're not running my build a Pi script and you've built the Raspberry Pi yourself, you might have to run sudo apt-get install YAD. And that would go ahead and get the YAD interface installed. In addition to that, you're going to need Direwolf installed and configured already on your Raspberry Pi. Again, if you're using my build a Pi script, that's already taken care of for you. So the last thing we need to do is run ln space hyphen sf space. Now we're going to give it a path. And again, guys, I'll leave this down in the description below so you can copy and paste. But the full command is tilde forward slash pi hyphen APRS forward slash pi hyphen APRS. We'll give it a space. Then we'll give it a tilde forward slash desktop forward slash pi hyphen APRS. And that command is just going to put a link out on your desktop uh, that we can use as a shortcut. So we'll go ahead and minimize the terminal window and you'll find that link out on your desktop. We'll go ahead and double click that and we want to choose execute here. We don't need execute in terminal for this one. So let's go ahead and choose execute now. You're going to get a warning here about uh, no call. Uh, basically when you first download the app there's no call sign or anything set in that. So that's one of the first things we need to do is take a look at our settings. And we'll just come down through the list here. Uh, I'm gonna give it my call sign first. The next one is whatever SSID you want to use in addition to your call sign. You'll give it your city, your state, uh, a four character grid square here. The next one is the heard you message. Now, if you're working with uh, satellites, which is one of the things we can do with this application, then this would be your heard you message. Now, in addition to what it says right here, it will also append your city and state to the end of the message inside the script. So you'll notice here it says heard you via the ISSN, and then the script would add Murfreesboro and Tennessee to it. Next down is the QSL message and then a status comment. So uh, when you click the status button, this would be appended to the message. 
Uh, and I'm not sure why that actually I thought by default would say pi hyphen APRS space station. Next up, we need to go ahead and get our latitude and our longitude entered in here. The next line down is our APRS symbol. Now this symbol is what displays on the map at a site like APRS.fi. If you want to know more about APRS symbols, you can do a Google search and take a look at what symbols are available to use. Now this one, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, this one's just a block of squares that shows up on the map. Next up, we've got our APRS path. By default, it's set up to work uh, the ISS, but we can also set this up to work other terrestrial stations on the ground. If you wanted to do that, you would change this from CQ, ARISS to something like uh, wide 2 hyphen 1. Next up, we've got the new message sound. So if you received a message, the Raspberry Pi will actually play that message from the built-in headphone jack on your Raspberry Pi. So this is separate from the uh, primary sound card that you would use uh, to interface with the radio. Uh, and you can change this. If you just click on it, it will allow you to go in and pick a new sound. Uh, but by default, it uses message.wave. The next box below that will allow you to choose a custom Direwolf configuration file. So if, you're, if you have multiple configuration files, you can easily set that here. Now the last three boxes are grayed out and you can't actually make a change from inside the settings. If you do need to make a change to one of these variables, let me show you guys where that is located. If we open up the file explorer, and we come to our pi-aprs directory, you'll find your config file right here. If we click on that and choose edit in a text editor, you now have access to those last three lines of information here. So should you need to change those variables, you can do it inside of this file. Now, one quirky little thing that I still need to work out, even though we've set all of our information in the settings, you'll see that this still reads your call no call. If we just quit the app and open it back up, you'll see that it now reads with my call sign. Now, you only have this uh, during the initial setup period or if you uh, decided to change call signs at some point in the future. Now that we have all of our settings uh, entered in correctly, we do need to go ahead and click start modems. Now this will go ahead and fire up Direwolf in the background and have that ready to accept messages to be able to send them out. And it fires up this little script which listens for incoming messages. So if we receive an incoming message, you would see a pop-up window on the screen and it would tell you who the message is from and what the message is. Now let's take a look at how we can send a message out. Uh, and we can do this both through the ISS or other satellites, but we can also use this application to send messages to other APRS stations here on the ground. So if we click free message, I'm going to choose terrestrial APRS message. That'll tell it that it's going to a ground station. And I'm just going to give it my call sign and a quick test message. Now notice I am not on the primary APRS frequency, I'm on 145020, just a simplex frequency. That way we don't uh, put a lot of chatter out unnecessarily on the APRS frequencies during testing. I also have another radio here in the shack monitoring 145020. So if we go ahead and click OK, we get a sending message alert and you heard the message being passed out over RF. So you do have several other things that you could use with satellite communications. Your status, you could uh, send somebody a heard you message, a QSL at the end, uh, and you can also post a position report via the ISS. Now once you're done, it's super simple to shut everything down. Just click the quit button and all of the modems are automatically shut down on exit. So there's no stop modems button uh, built into the application.
Now, one last thing before we head off, I do want to show you guys uh, the log file. So if we open up our file explorer again, and we come back to our PyAPRS directory, you'll notice that after a session, you have a logs directory. If we open up that logs directory, you'll be able to see a log file with the date and time that that log file was created. So if you want to go back after uh, your session, you can go back in, you can look at messages received, messages sent, all that data is contained within the log file. So you don't have to really worry about logging things as the contacts are happening. You'll have a record of it in the logs directory. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find it useful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.